Hey everybody, welcome back to Above and Below, and eagle-eyed viewers might notice a slight change to the board that's happened. Uh, we've been invaded by penguins! Jen jumped, as soon as I stopped filming, Jen jumped over and took out the prototype pieces I had and threw these little glass penguins she's been building because it's how we've been playing, because they're just adorable. We absolutely love these little guys that Jen's been making. There are a whole bunch of new colors she just brought back from the States. There's this little pink one we're using as the first player marker, and then there's the periwinkle. I don't know what all the colors are, periwinkle and... Uh, but anyway, uh, doesn't change anything about the game. Remember, this is all prototype stuff. The game does not come with cute little glass penguins. All right, so let us continue. Jen is now the first player. And so she's got her four bucks, and she's good at building because from now on, when she builds, she gets a buck back. She needs to be able to still pay. So, for instance, if Jen just had one of her characters do some day labor, not only would she get another cider, but she'd get another buck. Then she'd have five bucks, and she could build one of these buildings, which gives her a victory point at the end of the game, and another bed so everybody can wake up, or can increase her income by one, and she'll get a point at the end of the game for every mushroom she has. Or... She is the first to go, and she also benefits from um, hiring people. So, yeah, I think Jen, first of all, she is going to train somebody. She's going to use her teacher. And let's see. She's got four bucks. So she should just probably pay two and get the cheapest one, this builder, who is really not that great an explorer. I mean, a 50-50 chance of being able to produce two, but a good builder. Um, but she's already got two builders, and she paid three bucks, which almost bankrupts her, but she's going to do it anyway. She really wants that fish man. Remember, she wanted him in the first round. She's getting him in the second round. And he doesn't come in tired. He comes in ready to go. Nice. And he's a great explorer. So actually, maybe Jen will do an explore this turn. Because these three characters, they can, you know, if, if they all succeed, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Although he only gets three on a six. But you know, even if, you know, he has a better than 50 chance of getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And remember, you can exert them too, so they take a little bit of damage to get an extra point as well. So Jen could do very well with this trio of explorers. But we'll worry about that in a second. So her first action was she um, recruited somebody else and had to pay for it. Now it is my turn. And let's see here. I'm definitely gonna build. Because this guy, I mean, there's no reason to send him exploring. He has a 50-50 chance of generating one. He is just a terrible explorer. So I'll have him build, particularly since I got a lot of money. And I'll, have, I'll pay four bucks and get a buck back. So I got the other one of these buildings that when you recruit somebody, they, they come in ready to go. I have to admit, in a two-player game, it strikes me and Jen is crazy weird that there are two of these, that there's two identical ones. It, you know, for a four-player game, it makes perfect sense because, uh, you know, that means there are, at the beginning of the game, there's a 2-3 and a 4-4. Four, four. There's four cheap, quick, easy-to-buy special power cards. But here, I mean, you know, Jen could have bought this first. It would have done absolutely nothing for her except be worth a point. At the end of the game, you get a point for every building you've built. But it would have prevented me from getting this power. It just seems strange. It really feels like in a two-player game that this should have been removed. But, eh, whatever. I might ask Ryan about that, too, because it just seems weird. Uh, because, you know, it, it, it's just, of course you're going to buy this every turn. It almost comes pre-scripted that both players will end up getting this building. You might as well just start with the building because, yeah, anyway though. So I built that. Now, uh, and that was my first action with the builder. And so now I've got the special get to work fast power. And now it's Jen's turn. So she's going to do a big, bold exploration. Well, interestingly, she's only got one buck. So it's not like she can build anything, even though, you know, because... Heck, the cheapest thing that you could build right now costs four bucks, and Jen can't even build that because she hasn't explored underground yet. She could just, um, you know, have two of these characters labor, which would get her a cider and two more bucks. Then she'd have three bucks, but even still, she, you know, the cheapest thing she can build is five bucks unless she explores. So I think it is time for Jen to explore. She is going to explore. So here is the cavern. She is going to explore. Out of the way, you. And let's see, who is going to go? Um, well, this guy's got to go because, you know, he has a guaranteed two success. And if we're a little bit lucky, he gets three success. So he's going, definitely. We might as well have the Explorer Girl go. So between the two of them, it's a pretty good chance that we'll get at least four successes without anybody having to exert. And should I send Builder? I'm going to do it. It's crazy. It's very risky. I mean, because he just might be a total dud because Jen does. I mean, I'm the only player who will ever get rerolls. But Jen's going to send all three of them down there and explore. So, where is she? Okay, so we got a roll to find out what number from the book we read. Do, do, do. And it's, oh, come on, not number one again. Let's do something else. 
All right, number four. Number four is number 64. So we turn, so Jen hands me the big book. I turned to um, entry number 64. There we go. And I read this to Jen. So let's find out what these brave adventurers do. <clears throat> Your party finds a small raft on the side of a huge underground river. The water smooth and clear. You decide to board and see what you can find downriver. Tiny silver fish trail along beside you, growing in number with each passing moment. Suddenly, the fish scatter in every direction, disappearing into the depths, and something huge and dark looms underneath your little raft. Four red eyes open, and a monstrous fish emerges from the water, knocking your raft towards the shore. Do you paddle for shore, or fight the huge fish? And so that's Jen's choice. Paddle for shore, which Jen has to get a success of three, which, I mean, it's impossible. Jen can't fail at that because she's got a guaranteed three easily. So she could paddle for shore, but that probably won't be a very good reward, or she could fight the fish. And to fight the fish, she needs a five or an eight. And I think Jen's going for it. She is gonna, she's gonna fight the fish. So she needs a five or an eight. So she declares which one's gonna roll. She'll have fish man roll first. And if she can get a five, on this, that'll be awesome because that's three successes and she needs a five or an eight total. So come on, let's see number five, lucky number five. So close, number four, okay. So he only produced two. Now she's gonna roll and we need a three or better. We need a four, let me see another four. Let me see another four or a six. A six would be great too. Although, we, so she was fully successful, really wanted a six for this guy so he could have produced three. Let's give it a try, come on. A lucky, or, although no, actually, because we have to get at least a three or he totally fails. Come on. Just any, anything. Okay, everybody, don't picture a one or a two. Anything but a one or a two. Anything but a one or a two. Oh, a three. Yikes, that was close. Okay, so our results are th um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we had six total. And remember, we needed a five or an eight. So we've got our five. We could, you know, so we can basically have a good fight with the fish. We probably fought it off or something like that. Or if we get an eight, we can get the really big reward. Now, we're at six. We can get the eight if I have two of these characters be exerted, which means they'll be knocked out and they, it'll take them more time before they can get back to work. But and I, it would have to be two of them. Oh, if only, if only this guy could have rolled the six. Shoot. If these two were reversed, that would be so awesome. But you have to declare who's rolling before you. So, you know, there's a real luck of the. Um, let's see here. So, hmm. If only I had the. If only Jen had my reroll power. Does she go for the middle one? Or she go for the, And now she doesn't know. You know, me, I'm looking at the book. I know exactly what the rewards are, but Jen doesn't know. She has to make the decision in the dark. Would it be worth it to um, lose two characters? Or not lose, just injure two characters. I think she's going to do it. She will injure two characters. So this guy, um, you know, he's a builder and you know, he's good, but he's hard to... So he got injured, so that put Jen up from, to seven. And he'll have the girl get injured, and that put her up to eight. So the, they're both in the hospital, in the infirmary, and so Jen's done it. She achieved eight, which was the target, and what is her reward? She gets a fish, I guess the fish we defeated, an amethyst, and plus one reputation. So Jen has just moved up. She's staying in the league. Because remember, at the end of the game, whoever has, in a two-player game, whoever has the most reputation gets four points. That's a huge swing. And if Jen can move up a couple more times, she has two points at the end of the game, or four points, or even seven points, if she has enough reputation. So that was worth it. And so she got a fish and an amethyst. You know, to go with her one dog. Now she would have liked to have gotten some money because oftentimes, you know, for the really big rewards when you go adventuring, you can get like four or five or six bucks as one big reward. And that's kind of what Jen was hoping for. So she'd have enough money to have the other guy build something. But instead she got some goods. Now then, um, you know what I think she will do? Since amethyst is the rarest item in the game, it's not very likely Jen's going to be picking up a lot more amethyst. You can see it's the rarest thing. She's going to go on ahead and lock this amethyst in. So now she is getting five income every round instead of four. And if she does get any more amethyst, she'll have to put them here so each amethyst is only worth one point. Now she could put this in, and that means she'll go from earning um, five income to six income every turn. And every fish she gets is worth one point. But she's not going to lock that in yet. 
In fact, she doesn't have to lock any of these in. She can lock them in whenever. She'll worry about that, you know, because we'll see what else happens. All right. Oh, and, and see, and this guy, meanwhile, he wasn't exerted. He's just exhausted. Now, it's actually not too bad because, you know, even though these characters are exerted, Jen still only has three beds. So, you know, all three of these guys, we'll, we'll worry about that at the end of the turn, too. Right. So that was Jen's turn, and she has now successfully explored a cavern as well. So she can start building underground rooms also, just like me. So that was Jen's big adventure. Now, me. Well, I've got the doubles. You know I want to adventure some. Although, I should take advantage of this and hire somebody. Yeah, okay, so I am going to hire somebody. I will uh, use my teacher. Who will I recruit? I think I will pay three bucks. So there's five, two change. And I'll get this big burly builder guy because he's a pretty good explorer. Um, unless he rolls a one, he's got two for success. So that's actually pretty nice. And he doesn't come in tired. He comes in ready to go because of the thing. And so now it's Jen's turn again. All right, all she's got is this guy. Hmm. I think she will have him, since she doesn't have enough money to build anything, she'll just have him do day labor. Now, she doesn't have to do anything at all. She could just have him pass, and that means there's one less bed that's needed, so that means more people can rest. But she'll go on and have him work anyway, just so she can get another dollar and another cider. Okay. And so that was it. Jen's going to be pretty much done now. Now it's my turn again. And I believe I'll have these two brave characters explore. And let's see what they find in the cavern. All righty. So they're going to explore. We find it's number six, which is entry 121. So I hand the book to Jen. Jen goes to 121. All righty. And here we go. Here's their adventure. 121. You come upon a group of fish folk conversing around a small fire. As you approach, you see that there is a seriously injured fish folk child in the midst of them. You happen to be carrying some common medical papers and wonder if you might be able to help the child. Do you offer your help or do you leave them to their own? All right. So I can continue exploring. Which all I got, if I, if I um, continue exploring, all I need is a two and I'll be successful. And I pretty much, I'm pretty much guaranteed of getting, well, I could get, you know, with my rerolls, I could get upwards of five with these two. So I don't think I'm going to continue exploring. My other option is help the fish folk where I need to get a four or a seven. And now there's an interesting thing. I would get plus two to my total success. If, you know, and, and Jen would tell me this, plus two to my total success if I had a paper, if I had a piece of paper in my advancement track. If on a previous turn I had found paper and I had locked it in, and I could lock it in, right? Now, you know, I might have had paper and I said, well, heck, I'll just lock this paper in, you know, then I would get plus two to my success. But I don't have any paper, so I don't get to take advantage of that. So what are we going to do? Help the fish folk. I need a four or a seven. Let's get going. Let's have big burly man roll first. He gets a four, and that means he gets his three successes. And now let's her roll. She needs at least a three. And she got a three, so I didn't even have to re-roll anything. So that's a total success of five. But if I want the really good reward, I need to seven. So I could injure both of them. They'd both go to the hospital, and um, then I'd hit seven because I'm currently at five. And you know what? I don't think normally I would do it, but since Jen's got a couple in the hospital, I think I can afford to have a couple in the hospital as well. So I'll have both of them get er injured. So that pushed us up to seven. It was a very exerting um, medical emergency that had to be dealt with. So we hit seven. And what is our reward? Two reputation. So boom, boom. I've caught back up to Jen on the reputation track. That's a big deal. That was definitely worth it. Um, a coin, I make one buck, all the fish folk had to give me, and what was the other thing? Alrighty, a pot, a clay pot, which is kind of on the more rare scale. So this might be something I want to lock in, because chances are I'm not going to be getting a heck of a lot of pots, so I don't mind locking them in at a low victory point thing, so that I can get closer and closer to you know, making fish worth more. So that's interesting. Okay, so, and, but the most important thing was I've caught up on the reputation track, and that's a pretty big deal. Okay, so that was it. And now, so Jen is done. I am done. We, oh, and of course, I now have two underground caverns that I could build in, and I've still got four bucks. And so we have finished another round. And so now we move on to the third round. There's uh, with the purple penguin. And let's uh, see, what else? Oh, another, another cider will be available. Villagers get cheaper. New ones come out. 
Let's see, a builder who is really not all that great, and a builder who is yeah, all right. Okay. Two more people come out, and um, oh, and now we got to rest. Okay. So I only have three beds. Now I have an interesting choice. Um, I definitely will rest these two. Well, let's okay. You can use a bed either to make an exhausted person ready to work or to make an overexerted person exhausted. So I've got three beds. So one bed, two beds, and three beds. So I'll get this guy back because he's a very good explorer. And, um, you know, and I want to... Oh, wait. No, I, I had the top... Yeah, okay. So there we go. So, um, and if I had some cider... Uh, but I don't. Jen does. If I had some cider, I could use it now, and he would completely wake up, and I'd have three workers. But as it is, I'm only going to have two workers next round because I have not built. So there's two buildings out here that have more beds. It's important to have beds so you can keep your workforce at full efficiency. Meanwhile, let's see what Jen's going to do. Jen will use the cider she got from her day labor, and she will wake up Fishman with that. Oh, he just got a jolt of cider, and so she's got three beds. She'll wake up him and him, and also her. Because, yeah, him or you know, they won't wake up, but they'll go to exhausted. There's actually sometimes you can find medicine. Medicine is a way that you can get somebody from exerted to exhausted without having to use a bed. One of these has to wake up. This guy can produce more, but he only has a, a 66% chance where she is a guaranteed. I think I have the girl wake up. Okay, so there we go. So everybody has rested up. Everybody collects their income. All right, and let's see. I think Jen. Before the end of the turn, she locked that amethyst in, so her income is increasing. And you know what? She'll lock the fish in, too. So her income has increased quite a bit. So Jen gets six bucks. And me, I definitely locked this pot in, but I'm still saving my fish. I want my fish to be worth more points. So I locked in the pot, and that gets me five bucks in income. So I've got nine bucks. Jen has got eight bucks. We're tied on reputation. All right, so things are going pretty well. And that was the end of the second round. Now we go on to the third round. I'll be the first player, and what am I going to do? Let's see here. Um, well, you know what? I think I'm going to build. I'll have this guy build. Although, I only have two people. If I want to explore this turn, I have to send both of them, because you, you have to have two people go explore. So I think this is a round where I'm going to have to pass on exploring. But I'm going to build, because I think I really need to do this. Oh, no, 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 no. I will train somebody. And what will I pay? I'll just pay one buck and get the cheapest one. And they come up ready to go. So now I've got two builders. I could build two things. So that was my first action. Now it's Jen's first action. She's got three workers ready to go. She's got enough money to build. She also wants to build. What is she going to build? Build, build, build. Um, how much money does she have? She has eight bucks. She could actually build this, this underground uh, granite quarry or ore quarry, um, which means she would get two ore, and each one of those ore would eventually be worth two points if she locks them in there. So that's interesting. But I think she wants to get a bed. So, oh, yeah, I know what Jen's going to do. Jen is going to have this trainer. He's not going to train anybody. He's not going to teach anybody. He is going to do some day labor. So the first day labor, Jen gets another cider. She is rocking the cider and a buck. So she has nine bucks now. Nice. And so me, I've got two builders now. I'm going to go ahead and have somebody build. And I will build. Let's see here. See, all these key ones, they've gotten very expensive now. 11, 14, 16, 17, 18. I've got eight bucks. I think I'll go ahead and build this building for five because it gives me a bed and a victory point at the end of the game. And now, space is getting tight. I've got to move everything around here a little bit. There we go. So, I now have four beds. So, I'll be able to rest people up a little bit more efficiently. And that's a victory point. Every building you build is worth a point. So, this one is effectively worth two points and a bed that will give me more workers every round. So, that was, and so that cost me five. And so, I've still got three bucks, but three bucks isn't enough to build anything. Well, we'll worry about that in a second. Okay. So now Jen's turn. So she is going to build as well. And she is going to spend nine bucks. A very expensive build. That's why she just made the money to get nine bucks. She's going to build this super building, which increases her income. She makes an extra buck, three points at the end of the game, and an extra bed. That is a big deal. So much so that I run out of space here. All right, there we go. And so that's very nice. So she has four beds now. And um, oh, and 
Because she just built a building, she gets a dollar back because of that other special power. So that's nice. Okay. And so my turn again. And one guy can't go exploring by himself. I don't have anything to harvest. He's a builder. I've got three bucks. But the, oh, oops, I forgot. Whenever, and whenever any of these things get built, a new one comes out to replace it immediately. So this $6 thing came out and this $7 thing came out. Uh, and, that, and this thing generates rope. You could harvest up to two rope from it. It's a bed and two victory points. All right. So this other guy, he can't do much of anything. I could have him labor and make a dollar, but it's always better to be the first to labor because then you get the cider as well, which is very, very nice. And since Jen's already got the cider, I'm tempted just to not do anything with him and pass because I've got four beds. Three of these guys will come back, so I'll have four actions next turn, and this injured girl will go from injured. So, yeah, I'm just going to pass. I'm not going to do anything. So I'm passing. My turn is over. Jen's still got one character. She's got one dollar. She's I, Interestingly, I think she's going to pass as well. Yeah, so we're both passed. Right, okay. Ooh. Um, or actually, should we? One, two, three. Yeah, yeah. Yep, okay, so yeah, we both passed. So that was it. So, as always, at the end of a round, we move on to round four. Now, there's another cider that comes out. There are new villagers. All these got cheaper. There's another frog man. And a uh, nice mustachioed gentleman. Came out, new villagers, uh, and now our villagers have to rest. So I have four beds, so one, two, three, and she is finally out of the infirmary, but she's still exhausted from her troubles. All right, so I'll have four workers next turn. Jen has four beds, but she also has a, so she has four beds. So one, two, three, and then this guy comes out, and she didn't use her cider. Now, what she could not do is, it's not kind of unfortunate, she could, she could like say, hey, I'm going to use the cider for this. And then I'll go one, two, three. And you think, hey, I've got a fourth bed. Have this guy rest the second time. But you can't do that. You can't have one character use two different beds to move up twice. So as it is, Jen's going to save her cider. And she's got four people to go. And this guy is um, healed. But she can use the cider to get him up next turn. And so uh, Jen will be the first player next round. Oh, and we get our income. Jen is making six bucks. And I am making five bucks, unless I want to lock my fish in, but I'm not. I'm saving my fish. I want them to be worth more points. So I get five bucks. And that was it. And we're now on to round four of seven. We're about halfway through the game. But we now have much bigger workforces. We can start getting to the point where if we wanted to, we could send in two different explore groups. And for me, that's a very valid thing because it's very difficult for me to fail because I get so many rerolls. So every turn, I might just send in two groups of explore. I have two explore. Exploring basically gives you more places you can build underground, but it also is a great way. You never know exactly what you're going to get, but you can get all kinds of stuff. And it's, the, it's really the only way your reputation can increase. And we want to get more reputation so that somebody, you know, whoever has the most reputation gets the points, but there's also bonus points to be had. So exploring can get you lots of rep points, but staying above ground and building can, um, you know, get you more beds, get you more victory points, get you more stuff to harvest. I mean, so far it's kind of weird that nobody has actually built anything that would let them harvest. In fact, I think, you know what Jen's going to do, with her five bucks, the first thing Jen is going to do is she's going to have this guy, because he's really not very good at anything other than building. She's going to have him build. She is going to pay four bucks to get this underground grotto and put it right here. And so she has now built an outpost. And it's not a refreshing one, but she can now start harvesting this to collect these two fish. And remember, for Jen, fish are worth victory points because she locked these fish in. All right, and so she got that. So it was a point to have this building, two more points for the fish, and it gives her um, character something else to do, to go out and harvest as well. So Jen built that, and a new thing comes out, and it is oh, a $3 thing, which um, increases your reputation by one automatically and three points for only three bucks. Oh my gosh, I cannot let that pass. I'm totes going to build that. So five, one, two... Oh, and I forgot, um, Jen, because of her special power, she also gets an extra dollar. Remember, every time she builds, she gets an extra dollar. So I built this, I put it underground, and now I have pulled into the lead on the reputation race. Okay, so that was my first move, and now it's Jen's first move. She's still got three folks. She's got four. Oh, and a new card came out. It's another three. Oh, a bed! Oh, Jen wants this, but she can't 
because she has no more underground caverns that she's explored. So she would have to go on an adventure and then she'd be able to build once she successfully wears me. Oh, she really wants that. So, but interestingly, all her workers are done. Even if she gets an adventure, she can't build anymore because both her works are done. She's got two teachers and an explorer. And she can see, I've got two builders. Chances are I'm going to build this thing because I can build it right off the bat. So I don't think there's any reason for her to rush on that. She should be thinking about what else. I mean, she's got four bucks. If she could get one more buck, if she did a day labor, not only would she get another cider, which remember, if you build this building, every cider you have left over at the end of the game is worth a point. Not only would she have another cider, but she'd have five bucks so she could build this building, which gives her points for mushrooms. Although there are no mushrooms yet, and so far there's been no, um, no buildings have come out that let you harvest mushrooms. Nobody's found any mushrooms in adventures. So this isn't quite as exciting. Um, heck, she could just have all three of her last people do day labor. That would get her three bucks, plus her four bucks, plus her six bucks. She'd have 13 bucks. Next round, she could buy one of these really expensive buildings. If she wanted to, you know, and just really focus on that. Or she could do an explore and who knows what she'd find with, it, with her other adventures. And the interesting thing is there are four adventures in this book that actually unlock special um, workers. I forget the names of it, but this kind of, um, you know, uh, this very finicky cat who is interesting. He's a very, very powerful character, but you have to roll to see if he'll, when you actually tell him to do something, he might not do it. You might just say, no, I refuse. Uh, the, uh, the liquid lady, the kind, she's very creepy. On a two, she gets a three. So she's a great explorer, but she permanently reduces your reputation by one. And then there's the Glogo. These are a race of creatures. You, you see them in several of your underground adventures where you run into them and talk to them and do all kinds of things to them. One of the adventures, Jen and I have not found it yet, actually lets you recruit one into your village. And you know he's a pretty good explorer, but also whenever you build, you get a dollar automatically whenever you build with this guy. And then there's finally the mechanical man, who is interesting, you know, he's pretty two, a uh, guaranteed two for exploring. The interesting thing about him is he has his own bed. So he wakes up every turn without needing a bed. And by the same time, he doesn't care about potions or, um, or cider. So, um, you know, it's, it's pretty rare to get one of them, but they're really cool special. It makes that game very special when you get one of them into your city. So we're about halfway through the game. There's still a lot of options, a lot of ways to go. It's anybody's game right now. I'm slightly in the lead on the reputation. Jen has, um, we've both built the same number of buildings, although Jen's got more, well, let's see. Jen's got three, and I've got three, four um, points. But Jen's also got um, two points in fish over here. I mean, I can always lock this in and make one point, but I would say it's anybody's game at this point. And that, folks, was a quick run-through of the first half of a game of Above and Below. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts now, you can hit the button on screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2,